Hello, I'm Rick, and Rick wants to know how to lower my anxiety and quickly let go of stressful upsets rather than stew, worry, or simmer with resentment for hours, for days, weeks, years, some things forever. I want to be able to calm myself anywhere at any time quickly, whether I'm by myself or with others, something that is free without waiting for a doctor's appointment or a medication. I want to find comfort without stuffing myself with comfort food, you know, burger and fries or the onion rings. The onion rings at this place, they are, I don't know what they put in the breading, but it is just, it's, it is, it's comforting. Focus, focus. So the secret to releasing upset is to tap into the body's natural de-stressing system, the vagus nerve. Settle back for a minute and I'll explain. Maybe grab a drink or something to eat, a burger, fry, get the onion rings. The onion rings are so, mm, so much better than fries. So reducing anxiety, letting go of stress, bringing myself from frightened, anxious, or agitated to quiet, in control, centered, from panicked to placid. This is a huge challenge for most of us. A quick search of our patron chat rooms reveals over 300 posts about anxiety, including a few by me. Lots of stories about anxiety and as always, helpful practices and suggestions, ways to become calm at peace, but only three posts about the key element to every anti-anxiety practice, the vagus nerve. Yes, your vagus nerve. As you'll see, this network, known as the parasympathetic nervous system, connects your brain to all kinds of other organs. It is the good news network, telling your wound up body and racing mind to chill, relax. It's okay, dude. While you may not be familiar with the vagus nerve, you are doubtless familiar with its opposite number, the body's alarm system, the network that spreads the bad news, commonly known as your fight or flight system. At the first sign of danger, it tells you kill or run. Fight or flight is properly called the sympathetic nervous system, and it's instinctive. And it was crucial for survival amongst early humans because they were dangerous times. And so this danger, danger, red alert, red alert, man your battle stations. Or when they had cows, man your cattle stations, is your sympathetic nervous system. And it's fast. It, oh, Sorry. The reason it's fast, like most of what makes up modern humans, it gave an evolutionary advantage and got passed on. The quicker you identify potential dangers, the sooner you're gonna be running away while the caveman next to you is still wondering, is that a saber-toothed tiger or is that a bush? No, no, it's a tiger. The quickest reactors were more likely to avoid being devoured by a pack of hyenas and then survive and pass on their genes through, ask your parents, they'll explain what that is. Survival of the fittest, of course, doesn't mean strongest. A lot of people think it does. Ask the dinosaurs, strongest isn't best. Fittest means a fitting reaction or fitting in. If Darwin meant physically fit, well, insects would be long gone and Earth would be ruled by a coalition of lions, tigers, and bodybuilders. Your parasympathetic nervous system comes online once your brain decides, okay, there's no more danger, the danger's passed, there's no more threat. The parasympathetic system starts telling your body, okay, dial it down, everybody, relax, it's just a shrub, you're okay. Now, the vagus nerve is actually two nerves, and it's about the longest nerve in your body. So when people say, you got a lot of nerve, it's obvious they admire your vagus. That's what I tell myself. This network tells your body to come off of DEFCON 4 and chillax, expunging the lingering stress hormones, hopefully. Notice that like the fight or flight sympathetic system, 
the parasympathetic system can send signals to your heart, lungs, stomach, intestines, among other organs down there. Speaking of which, the vagus nerve is heavily involved in your stomach and the stuff, the things that come after the long, you know. It's been nicknamed the rest and digest system, the unwind and dine, the grab a seat and eat, the focus. So your sympathetic system instantly blasts adrenaline and cortisol through your body so you can fight for your life or run for your life. And that can save your life in the short term. Over the long term, it can shorten your life. Too much stress for too long a time can lead to burnout, combat fatigue, PTSD, those kind of things. The adrenaline, cortisol, and all these other stress chemicals, they're hard on the body. It's like putting rocket fuel in your car. Yeah, it goes really fast for a while, and then the engine burns out. Now, because the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems radiate outwards, your whole body is affected. My heart is racing. I can hardly breathe. I've got a terrible gut feeling. I was so scared, I almost darkened my dainties. Your sympathetic system can go from zero to 100 in a fraction of a second, as long as it takes for a car to cut you off in traffic. The parasympathetic system is slower, and it may need the rest of your trip to unjangle your jangled nerves as you talk yourself down and talk, whoa, God, did you see that, that guy, holy, well, yeah, typical, yeah. If the sympathetic nervous system is like an instant on-off switch, the parasympathetic is more like a dial, slowly dialing it down, gradually winding down and removing the bad chemicals, hopefully. But the stress chemicals can linger for a long time, which explains why a year after that driver almost crashed into you, you recall the moment vividly, but probably don't remember it any of the regular things that happened that week. Like, I don't know, you had breakfast, you got married, whatever. Even now, years after some of those incidents, if I think back about it, that one woman screaming at me and then just, oh, it all comes back. And I start getting agitated and cortisol and adrenaline and jaw clenching and righteous and hunched over and I'm bumping into things because I'm all up here in my head and the chemicals are coming. It's over, Rick, let it go. My brain is triggering all of these reactions again in my body because I'm hanging on to it. Here's the good news. We can strengthen, if that's the right word, our vagus nerve so that we calm down faster and we handle stress better. You may have heard of the term good muscle tone. I haven't obviously in years, but still, just as you can improve your muscle tone, you can improve your vagus tone. The research has revealed a lot of different ways to improve your vagus nerve, thereby building emotional resiliency and physiologic fit your body's reaction. <clears throat> it's not magic. It's actually pretty simple stuff. Yoga, walking in nature, meditating, journaling, deep breathing, massage, music, therapy, socializing. All these are scientifically proven ways to lower anxiety, to recover from trauma, and to strengthen your parasympathetic system. How many of these have you actually done yourself? Or would like to do, but you're too agitated and stressed to find the time to do them. And yeah, that's the other problem. Now, there are other practices to enhance your vagus nerve. I'll talk about them eventually down the road, and they're all good. But as I said off the top, I want a relaxation technique that I can practice anywhere, even at work. Something I can do anytime, by myself or when I'm with others, for free. And that's why a great access to your vagus nerve is through your lungs. You can control your breathing. And it involves a particular kind of breathing called box breathing. In my next video, I'll explain why we use breathing and demonstrate how effectively box breathing lowers blood pressure and heart rate. We're going to have a volunteer, someone who carries a lot of stress and anxiety, me. For now, take a deep breath and like, share, comment, and offer thanks to our patrons who allow me to produce this and all our videos. 
and you can find out all about the benefits and exclusive goodies that patrons enjoy for as little as $3 a month or as much as a million dollars a day. You choose. I'm Rick Green. See you soon. Don't do that. It's a lamp. Just a lamp. Just a lamp.